Hello, this is Vision Denial and the Road to MSI 2022. My name is Sam. I watched every single playoff game, yes, including that one, for all 11 regions that participated in MSI. And this is the Meet the Teams. Today, we meet the third team to qualify for MSI. Detonation focused me all the way from the LJL in Japan. And this fast-paced, mostly, very aggressive, high-tempo team Straight up, a fantastic delight to watch. Had a bit of a hiccup. So, let's see what that's all about. Starting with, let's start with the coaching staff and some of the pick and ban choices that they make. We got Kanzu over here, who has been in the LJL since its inception in 2014, bouncing between support player, analyst, and coach, from various teams, but primarily has had a home in Detonation Focus Me on and off since September of 2014, jumping from their main support lineup to analyst to head coach. This particular team has a habit of trying to remove things that have a lot of disengage and re-engage power, and you can tell this from the overall amount of LeBlanc, Renekton, uh, Silas, and so on and so forth being removed. While as on against them, Detonation Focus Me has a myriad of players that are very aggressive, lane dominant, really oppressive players. And I want you to notice that there's the Poppy Band that is fairly frequently removed from them as well. This will be super important because this translates to specifically some interesting case scenarios about Detonation Focus Me that are super impressive but very weird and had shown up during their playoff run you see over over here huge win rate another team that had very little competition across the spring split outside of the playoffs where historically for those who don't know detonation focus me is known as like the choking playoff team dominant during the regular season and then in playoffs a little bit more shaky but this doesn't translate super well when looking across the spring split overall. High amount of first towers grabbed. The number of heralds grabbed is almost fully controlled all the time. The number of dragons they hold, regular basis, two to three on every game. And they have a 50-50 rate on the first drake as well, showing that there's a strong preference towards the herald. But this is an incredibly aggressive fight oriented heavy tempo team and when they have the lead they will balloon it in the laning phase and will keep it all throughout now whether or not they keep ballooning it afterwards is more of a question on how you like where do you want to compare them do you want to compare them pre-playoff or post-playoff because those are two very different teams where they may be super dominant in the regular season, their playoff result is not always reflective of that. And I do have a leaning preference towards analyzing the playoffs over the regular season in terms of what we should expect them at MSI. But given also the history of this team choking during playoffs, some asterisks and difficulty come about from this. They have a very high win rate, and most of their losses straight up come from the playoffs and uniquely just from the playoffs so how does this look like from an individual team by team basis let's start by meeting our first player in the top lane we've got in the top lane evi and many of you will be familiar with evi evi has been in the ljl since 2014 and with detonation focus me since 2017 He's been a staple of this particular roster for four years at this moment. And he shows that he's worth keeping with this impressive set of stats that he's got going. He's very isolated in his particular lane, but given that he plays regularly 1-4 one, uh, one or 1-3-1 one, one types of compositions, and he straight up racks and demolishes people in the laning phase, 
Look at this particular differential. A thousand gold at 15 minutes is a huge contributor to why Detonation Focus Me is able to develop leads. It's very easy to see that this could be a strong, easy upset comer for when T1 comes around when their laners have this kind of workaround. Evie, having these aggressive types of plays uh, and different champions across the board just so static to just watch just so good that said during the playoffs we did see some moments of weird approach slash bizarre decision making that came about but this is a common theme across this particular roster and this team who across the board looks so dominant and so solid and then playoffs rolls around and it's a little shaky every time. So, what does that make it look like in the jungle position then? We've got Steel. And what a staple. Also having been with the roster here since 2017, Steel over here has had an impressive run in this particular split. I'm showing here his first blood participation because he is aggressive. Not only trying to gank on a frequent basis, but he's also regularly coming up at about a camp ahead every so often. And gold ahead and XP ahead. This man does just, just not stopping at all. And looking at his particular set of champions that he picks... Hecarim, Poppy, Nocturne, Jin Zhao, Diana, the Poppy in particular, having such a high ban rate and yet such a high 100% win rate with 14 KDA on this man, he is a showboater. And like his name indicates it, neutral objectives never miss his mark. He will regularly steal objectives, and if come clutch, he will save a game like no tomorrow. He had some interesting, weird decision making. And again, this is regular across the board for a lot of what was happening during the playoffs, where his decision making and his ability to set up neutrals was kind of lackluster during the playoffs. But given his entire run for the entire for the spring split, I should be it should be no surprise that he will do fantastic stuff in the jungle coming into MSI. Off to the mid lane where we have Yaharong. Detonation focused me having a very stable roster for a long time, found themselves having to need to replace Arya. And, come and behold, from Fred and Brion all the way from Korea, they got the chance to snag Yaharong. And has been doing fairly well since the start of January 2022 in the season. He's integrated well enough that he's played a much more supportive role across the board, not really trying to create any particular carry identity. He has a lot of utility and setup and zone control for the rest of his team. And on top of it, he doesn't usually lose out on resources either. He develops a heavy gold lead very early in, and while his CS lead may not reflect it, it's mostly because of his participation in First Blood and team fighting. He's got a very good set of repertoire and approach towards sieging and the neutral game. But again, as just a broken record during the playoffs, some of it was lost in lackluster and decisions to split push when not needed. As well as when it was supposed to be defending, trying to get any ounce of gold when not needed was kind of questionable. But given the impressive approach to this to the season so far, it does not surprise me that his uh, his utility based focus playstyle should do incredibly well for MSI. This man needs no introduction, having been part of the Japanese scene since 2012 and since the inception of the LJL. Utapon has been a staple of detonation focus me since 2013. Honestly, probably the strongest support that they've had. 
and he's a marksman. Uh, support is a figurative term. And like no difference, the high gold difference, the high XP difference, the high CS difference at 15 minutes only reflects this. On top of the half of his games where he gets first blood, Utapon is a skirmish heavy, team fight heavy, zone control marksman. His jinx and Aphelios, as well as his misfortune, will only create space. Don't ever give him something to skirmish on. He will do everything in his power to make sure that his fights go his way. And I'm going to repeat this one more time. The playoffs had a weird hiccup where his playstyle was largely passive. Way more than it usually would have been. The playoffs, again, is the bane of all existence for Detonation Focus Me fans, but they managed to pull it off near the end to clutch it all together. And Utapon, coming into MSI, should be able to show his skirmishing powers and his ability to team fight like no tomorrow, and should be a delight to watch as we go forward. And showing up on our last player, Meet Harp. Many of you may not know Harp as he's been a staple of the academy scene in Korea, having a brief moment in time being part of the main roster of KT Rolsters, but primarily of their challenger and their substitute. Detonation Focus Me decided to pick them up for the 2022 year after having needed to replace Gang. And he is such a team fight enabler. The vision score from Detonation Focus Me does not reflect very well the type of playstyle that they want to go for, but the champions they pick do. Harp has been an enabler for Utapon in many different ways, allowing him a lot of outs, zoning, and overall some solid engage options. Granted, the Curse of Detonation Focus Me also affects the new players. Yaharong and Harp are no exception to this rule, and Harp had some weird moments during the playoffs where he would just randomly pick engage points and re-engage points that honestly only was a detriment to his entire team. But, and again as a broken record, this being an anomaly for the region, uh, for the team during playoffs, it should not surprise me that they will do incredibly well coming in to MSI and having their very high tempo, high aggressive, large amounts of gold collecting profile and attempt to the game and seeing how they have been challenged and what they respond to with those challenges, Harp should be no different in being able to find angles to engage and help disengage the team when need be. So what do I think of this team particularly going in? Well, they're high fa they're high paced, high aggressive, super dominant approach towards neutral objectives, towers, and laning phase matches some of the good points that we see out of T1 Whilst also having seen some competition answer their aggression and poor play during playoffs, it gives me some hope to see that this could be a strong contender. And given that the representatives of the LJL continuously improve year after year, it would not surprise me to see Detonation Focus me create even more upsets and maybe surprise those with a top 6 to top 4 finish. Whether or not that is to be seen, or whether or not that is the case, remains to be seen as Detonation Focus may still have the weird hiccups on random moments that honestly should not exist for a team that has been this consistently dominant within their region for so long, regardless of the roster changes. And so, I will be super happy to see whether or not they shore up their inconsistencies that usually come up during playoffs in the international tournament. But who's to know? I'd like to hear your thoughts in the comments down below. If you liked the video, like, comment, subscribe, and all the rest of that. And I'll be keeping making these videos. With that, I'll see you all next time. Bye.